Ammonia has a strong irritating odor. This experiment should take place in a good ventilated area. Hey guys, today we are going to make some liquid gloves. So, let's start. This is what we need for our reaction. Here I prefer 25% of ammonia water instead of sodium carbonate. Although ammonia has a very strong smell, it can volatilize easier. The product you get with sodium carbonate, it's actually a lot stickier than you do with ammonia. For DDP, it works as a plasticizer, but it will be okay if you use 10 more grams of glycerin instead of 10 ml of DDP. And finally, we use 0.3 grams of sodium benzoate as a preservative. So, let's get started with casing. Casing has a whitish yellow color, and it usually has a sheep wool flavor. Now, we measure out 25 grams of casein into a beaker. Then, to casein, we add 65 ml of boiling water. Casein has a very low solubility in cold water. So, hot water can raise the solubility of casein in water. But here, we don't actually dissolve casein into water. Although its solubility is raised, it is just raised a little bit. Here, we are actually making casein to suck as much water as it can. Sucking water can help for the further reaction. After giving a good mix, we place it on the desk for about 30 minutes. Now casein is taking water into itself. After 30 minutes, we come back. And it's time to deal with ammonia. It's very important to wear gloves and masks to protect ourselves. Besides, it's very important to work in a good ventilated area. Now we measure out 2.5 ml of 25% ammonia into a measuring cylinder. Closing the bottle of ammonia and now we are ready to add ammonia into the casing. We give casein a bit more stirring and slowly add the ammonia into the beaker. The moment we add the ammonia, it's very important to stir it immediately. You can see the color in the beaker change into dark yellow and the solution get a lot stickier. Now it's time to give it a very good mix. Actually, there is no reaction going. The solution got stickier. It's because casein has a very large solubility in basic solution. At this time, you should also be very careful because as the temperature rises, ammonia volatilizes faster. This is what casein's molecule looks like. Casein is usually in milk or cheese. It gives us not only protein and also phosphorus and calcium. I found it interesting to play with this glue. It looks just like the cream in one of the chocolates called Twix. As we mix more, the solution gets more stickier. Sometimes it makes me very tired to stir it up. But it is very important to stir it for a long time. It can help our product to be in good quality. After giving it a good stir, we place it on the desk, and you can see there are two chemicals on my desk. Yes, they are glycerin and the DDP. 
Now we take out our scale again and measure out 19 grams of glycerin to a measuring cylinder. Now we add our glycerin into the beaker and give it a very good mix. The time you add glycerin, you will see that the solution gets soft again. But after a good mixing, you will see that the solution gets hard again. When the solution gets hard, it's a sign that you mixed it very well. When I saw the solution got hard again, I think it's time to add the DDP into the beaker. I took out another measuring cylinder and I measured out about 10 ml of DBP. If you were using 29 grams of glycerin instead of 10 ml of DBP, you can actually skip this step. Now we add our DBP into the beaker and give it a good stir. Like before, when you first add the DBP, the solution will get softer again. But after a good stirring, the solution will get hard again. The good thing about using DDP instead of glycerin is that it can help the solution to be softer when it gets hard. After a good stirring, you will see the color of the solution gets brighter. If you can play your solution like this, it means that you got a very successful solution. After giving a good stir, we place it on the desk. And we play some magic. You are right, we are nearly to the final step. We measure out 65 ml of ethanol into a measuring cylinder. Closing the bottle, and like before, we give it a very good stir. After adding the ethanol, your solution will get much more softer, and your solution will be more whiter than before. Some of the glue is stuck at the bottom or the wall of the beaker, so it's important to scrape it off and mix it with the solution. After a while, I think my mixing machine will do a better job. I drop the steer bar into the beaker and I turn the stirring on. The bottom of the solution is a bit sticky, so I need to help my steer bar with my spoon. After a bit of stirring, I successfully started it up. I mix the solution with my spoon in a negative direction from the steer bar. I thought it was a good way of mixing, but I failed. After some failing, I decided to make it stir itself. During this time, I added the sodium benzoate. I just didn't show in the video. Now it's time to review our product. First, I put some liquid on my left hand. I applied it nicely on my hand. And after some time, I waited it to dry.
I took out the paint I prepared, and I squeezed the bead on the back of the spoon. Then I applied it on my right hand, which I didn't apply any of the liquid gloves on it. Then I applied it on my left hand, which I applied some liquid gloves on it. I waited for 5 minutes for the paint to dry. After I came back, now it's time to know if we really made some liquid gloves. I put my right hand under the water to see if I can remove the paint. Then I put my left hand under the water. And you can see, after seconds, the paint is removed little by little. And finally, there is no paint on my left hand. Then I put my right hand under the water again. As you can see, the paint couldn't be removed from my hand. This proves that there is a protective layer on my hand. This is the end of the video. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe me for more interesting experiments.